Welcome to today's daily service. I'm really glad that you've joined in. I'd like to begin today's service with some words from the prophet Isaiah as he speaks about what this world will be like when our Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, has finished his work with it. Just listen in on these words. The wolf will live with the lamb. The leopard will lie down with the goat and the calf and the lion and the yearling together, and a little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear. Their young will lie down together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the cobra's den, and the young child will put its hand even into the viper's nest, and they will neither harm nor destroy. On all my holy mountain, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Let's pray. Father, we long for that day when the knowledge of you covers this earth like the waters cover the sea. In the meantime, would you sustain our faith in you? We see a day ahead when you will bring complete peace throughout your creation because of what the Lord Jesus Christ has done, is doing, and will do. Until then, Lord, would you sustain our faith in you, even as we confess it to you now. And let's say aloud together the words of our faith summarized in the Apostles' Creed. Read it aloud with me as the words come up on the screen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Well, this faith that we've just confessed together is so central to Christians, so central to so many of us. And yet, as we go about our day-to-day -day lives in the world, to many, it seems so peripheral, so irrelevant. When I go to the bank and talk about my finances, I don't say, Andrew, have you considered your spending in relation to the fact that Jesus is king and that he's coming again? When I go to the doctor, they don't uh, talk to me about my body as if the resurrection of the body is a real thing. <laughs> when my kids go to their schools, thankfully, sometimes they do hear about Jesus and hear about many other faiths, and I'm, I'm glad for that. But the impression isn't often given that the truth that we've just confessed is the most important story, the truest truth, the greatest story that the world has ever heard. How do we reconcile the centrality of our faith to us, to its being considered peripheral at best out in the world, being considered so small, so insignificant, the last thing we might turn to at a time of great trial? Jesus told two stories, which we'll look at just with these a few minutes today, which address this, uh, this tension, which, of course, his first disciples felt very much too. They were expecting a messianic king that would come and set up a kingdom that would uh, rule over the Romans, defeat all their enemies, and, and be seen by all to be their great messiah. Jesus didn't come that way. His story didn't play out that way, and he knew it wouldn't. And he told two stories to help them understand why. Matthew chapter 13, beginning at verse 31. Just listen to them with me. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed which a man took and planted in his field. Though it was the smallest of all seeds, yet when it grows, it is the largest of garden plants and becomes a tree, so that the birds come and perch in its branches. And the kingdom of heaven, he told them still another parable, the kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into about 30 kilograms of flour until it worked all through the dough. Two simple stories which make very similar 
point. The first, the story of the mustard seed. Even if people knew then that it wasn't technically the smallest of all seeds, but it was the most commonly used as small seed in the day-to-day -day life of the time. And so rabbis would often use the mustard seed as an example of something very, very small, which grew to become very big in their teaching. And Jesus does so here. He says, my kingdom is like this. It may look very insignificant and small, irrelevant now, but it is on a trajectory of growth. And it's going to grow to such a great point, a great tree. At that time, the little mustard seed could grow into a tree up to 8 or 12 feet tall, totally out of proportion to its beginnings. And the birds would come and nest, or, or at least perch, in the branches of the, of the tree. Maybe an allusion to Daniel chapter 4, where Daniel speaks about uh, the future of Ken King Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom uh, as a great tree and the birds coming to a perch in its branches, like many, many nations coming to take refuge in the shade of his kingdom. Jesus says, my kingdom is like that. He says it's like a woman working with flour, a great mass of flour, and she puts a little bit of yeast in, or technically here, a bit of leaven, uh, a little bit of last week's bread and, and crumpled up and mixed into the flour. And then as it's baked, that leaven provides the agent of growth. Jesus says, my kingdom's like that, small, seemingly insignificant, but when scattered throughout this world, it's actually the change agent that's bringing this world to the purposes for which it was designed. You think my kingdom's small, Jesus said. You think it looks petty, tiny, insignificant. You just wait. This thing's on the move. It's growing. It's going somewhere to the point where it will one day grow, where all will acknowledge the significance of my kingdom. Will you join in with me? Don't, because uh, my kingdom is disparaged and pushed to the periphery. Don't for one moment think that it's not the greatest show on earth. Join with me, Jesus says. Do you ever get discouraged? as you share your faith with your friends and family. Annabelle and I and some people from City Church went throughout the parish at Christmas time. Doesn't Christmas seem such a long time away? And we shared these little cards uh, uh, detailing our carol services at Christmas. And one person, bless them, put uh, the card back through the mail slot of the church with this writing kind of scribbled over all the details for our services. The last thing I want is God botherers on my doorstep. Keep your superstition and your prejudices to yourselves. You're insignificant. You're peripheral. You're even dangerous. God bless this. God bless this person. I've been called many things in my day, but I had to come to England to be called a God-botherer. Do you ever feel discouraged as you share your faith? Be encouraged. Jesus' kingdom is growing. He's calling people into his kingdom. It's not stationary. It's on the move. And it's, be it's becoming the thing that will be seen by all one day to be the most important reality on earth, the kingdom of heaven ruled by Jesus. So let's take a moment to pray to him and to pray for those whom we're longing to come to know Jesus. Let's pray. We'll begin with some words from Philippians chapter 2. Would you join in on the parts that say all aloud? In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Father, we do pause to uh, remember some of those in our lives whom we are longing to come to know Jesus Christ as Lord. We want them to bow the knee to you and to confess your Lordship now. 
and we name them in our hearts before you. We pray for our children and our young people. We ask that they would know Jesus Christ as Lord, that the faith that has become so central to so many of us would become their own, that they would embrace it and see the reality of Jesus now and give their lives and their futures to him. Please, may you guard and protect them as they head into a new school year soon. But most of all, we're asking that they would grow in the knowledge of you, Lord. And we'll close our prayers with the Lord's Prayer, aloud together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Well, let's sing together, Let Your Kingdom Come. Those who are. 
again, so glad that you've joined us today. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen.